Any questions? I'm going to go around the room with the microphone. And uh, you've got one here. Thank you, Claire. Can you hear me? I, I have two questions. Um, I think you touched upon it here on the last slide, but given high interest rates right now, um, what makes this avenue of approaching a bank for a loan or any type of credit line favorable as opposed to growth equity or venture capital? And my second question is, for businesses that are more services uh, or SaaS oriented, and you don't have physical assets, what do you use as collateral? Okay, great question. Great question. So now the bank interest rate is high because the prime rate is high. So now you are looking at your gross profit. We talked about the gross profit, right? So nowadays, a lot of business can have more than 10% profit or you have gross profit some of the business are 90 percent of gross profit some are lower 20 based on the gross profit number one these loans are not equity diluted you retain your ownership and lines of credit is you borrow as it goes and on the dates you borrow money there's an interest charge on it if you strategically manage the cash flow, you don't have to borrow 365 days. You can manage it that shorter time. I think that, that takes some discipline and then manage it. Two is that if you're not ready to sell your equity, I think a bank loan is still cheaper than the equity. I is really eight, nine, ten percent. How much you're gonna give up on the venture? It's a lot more expensive. Think about long run. Now, for the business like you, what you're saying is you don't have the fixed assets, but you have you might have accounts receivable. Depend, depending on your uh, operation model, if you have a 15 days accounts receivable, the bank will give a discount. Look at the quality of the accounts receivable. Give a discount and the lend against it to it. But for the smaller business, we don't look at those things so detailed. Well, we just put a UCC blank link on it, and we're going to give you a line of credit based on your revenue and your credit score. Does that help? <laughs> great, great, thank you. Uh, while we ask more questions, I know we didn't get to the last two topics because SBA loans are very uh, detailed topics, so if you need more information, connect with the bankers in the room. Uh, but we would love for you to take this uh, survey with the QR code, please, uh, to give Chase feedback for the presentation. We will not t they will not take any personal information, it's just saying, you know, good or not. Um, any other questions in the room? Thank you, Claire. Uh, I'd like to meet you all here. Uh, I have a question. I know <coughs> my parents yeah, gave me money, obviously, and they didn't return on it. But <clears throat> how do you support the, the entrepreneurs that are looking for that loan, but at the same time are trying to stay in the country in a legal way and make the business legal? But do you help the, the entrepreneur? in other ways besides the loan, like giving the money, or how does it work? Great question. Uh, we give to Dorchester Bay, which is a CDFI, every year money to support small business, because we are regu heavily regulated. Our hands sometimes are tight. So there are different organizations, financial organizations does different things. We also work with different non-profits. Let's say we year up. So we give year up a lot of uh, financial support to build the workforce. We even hire people from them, right? We also, um, we also highlight byproducts from local business. And uh, there's a called Chop Value. Um, there are the big, uh, we have highlight and uh, and the chocolate, um, other business. We bought a lot of products from them. 
So that's another way of supporting. We give them business. And also we work with different nonprofits, CWEs, to give out grants to the local business. So there's multiple ways we're doing. One we have the biggest one is JP Morgan Fund. It's our corporate responsibility. At a national level, Alpha is one of our sponsors. So um, we work with numerous foundations and nonprofits and CDFIs to deploy resources to support local business. Back it, it was more related about like how would you support that entrepreneur in order for him to be able to make the business grow like do you recommend them to any specific accelerator or incubator or maybe give them some sort of a, a class I don't know yes that's what I do uh, we are minority entrepreneurial program what I do is actually working with business owners, entrepreneurs, individually to help business owners start, grow, and scale your business through one-on-one -on -one interactions. It is individualized curriculum and allow you to have access to the network that we have and meet people with the same mind kind like you to build a win-win partnership in that sense. So I'm a consultant and our minority entrepreneurial program has launched in 2022 for the New England area. To this date, we have 220, approximately 220 minority business owners have signed up the program and have over 100 have graduated. So if you're interested in the program, email me and I can give you more information about that. Great, awesome. Well, thank you. If you have any more questions, please connect with Claire or all the backers, all the other backers in the room. If you know who they are, uh, raise your hand <laughs> real quick, bankers. Uh, there's one, anybody else? Okay, two, yeah, sorry. Yeah, different, different banks, again, agnostic. Many, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's already on, right? No. Many different resources. And uh, again, Claire, thank you so much okay. for this presentation. Really appreciate your time. Thank you.